Just think of it as the rough draft of the podcast world. This is the Newbie Writers Podcast with your hosts, Damian Boat and Catherine Bramkamp. Hey, this is episode 191 of the Newbie Writers Podcast, and apparently it's Halloween in America, and we try it here. Um, I don't know. Can I ask with you a question? Effect. No effect. It makes it sound like um, there's a there's a campaign problem. It's morning in America. I've forgotten which Republican had decided that one. Mm. And um, that's what it sounded like. It's Halloween in America. He's like, well, yes, it is. I know. And can you ask, what's this pumpkin spice rubbish? <laughs> I have, um, I get the Trader, there's a store in, this, in the mm. States called Trader Joe's. And um, they have, uh, you know, kind of exotic things, exotic foods, pretty good wine on, on a budget. It's for people on a budget. And, um, and there's a, a specific overeducated, underpaid demographic they cater to. And they have in their store right now, everything is pumpkin spice, including um, body butter. They have pumpkin spice coffee. They have pumpkin spice um, butter, butter, eating, you know, eating better, mm-hmm. pumpkin spice cookies. Pump- I don't think they have pumpkin spice wine, fortunately. But yes, I think Starbucks kind of started that pumpkin spice latte thing and it just exploded. So I, I don't really have, I, I don't have a, um, a reason for yeah, but it. Educate, just know that it's all over. Educate an Aussie here. What does it taste like? And don't say pumpkin. It Actually, it doesn't. It's more a cinnamon nutmeg with a little bit of pumpkin. So uh, I think heavy on the spice, light on the pumpkin. It sounds disgusting. No, very in a coffee, it's very tasty. Well, I don't drink coffee. But, yeah, I, I yeah. see all this stuff and I think, well, for my brain, we don't have that sort of thing here. The, um, I like pumpkin soup and I like roast pumpkin. And I thought, if someone drops that into a coffee, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's pretty good. Have you had some, Mark David? Do you do you go do you go for the holiday I, stuff at Starbucks? My 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 seasonal hashtag is TMP for too much pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? That question. <laughs> but how does it? Oh, it I don't know. Go Pum- ahead, because it, it peaks out at Thanksgiving, and then we move right into all things eggnog. Okay, well, answer me this then. Does the pumpkin spice stuff have a short life? Or is it one of those things where you go, oh, we've got pumpkin spice such and such, and someone's still dumping it in their coffee in January just because they like the flavor? Nope, nope, no. nope, nope. No, really Usually end. those are limited. Right. But it starts earlier and earlier every year, so because uh, it started like just before Labor Day this year, didn't it? It could have been. I mean, that's the other, that's the other problem. The creep goes ahead, you know, forward. Mm. I so, did see yeah, I did see more pumpkin spice stuff. So it doesn't that. last after Thanksgiving, but soon it'll be starting after Thanksgiving. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's like and, we and just stop rest. and then just stop for a day and start up again. Why yeah. don't we? Why Because we have that a little bit here. You know, things start earlier. Why don't we just cut the crap? And every time you go into, a, I don't know, a store. You have a Christmas aisle, an Easter aisle, <laughs> Halloween aisle, and just go, there you go, it's out all year round, done. Well, there are, there Christmas, all the time. There are Christmas stories, I don't know if, they, if you have them in Australia, but there are Christmas stories here that do operate all year round. Yeah, we've got one, and I always find it strange, but anyway. I guess you've got to buy your stuff earlier, and then they put the prices up, I'm sure, just before Christmas, going, well, you should have been more organised in July. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Good point. last year. Good point. July last year. Mm. <laughs> yeah. We just, and I'm not. So there we go. We just buy all the stuff after. So we'll buy the Christmas stuff in January when they're trying to clear it because something that was $50 goes out for 3 bucks, and then, you know. So cool. You, you yeah. can buy all your pumpkin spice products at the, 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 uh, at the last week of November just after Thanksgiving and save it for the following year. Mm, see, we, we don't point. have Thanksgiving. So that's the other thing. It, it doesn't make any sense to us, this whole Halloween thing. It doesn't lead into anything, so. <laughs> it doesn't. It's and the thing. The thing that's nice about Halloween is that you you give candy away to you know small deserving minions and Elsas, and it, you're only doing it because you're doing it. I, you know, there's no other obligation. And then Thanksgiving is great because there's no gifts, and then Christmas is just Christmas. It's just something mm. to suffer through. Well, just before we move on, because we can actually talk to Mark David Gerson about books and writing and stuff. You know, the thing he's really, really good at. The actual subject um, of the show. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'll probably go there. 
Because it's not I the. Thought this, I thought this was a pumpkin spice podcast. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, must, I must have the wrong number. That probably. Do not laugh. I'm sure there's a. I'm, I'm sure mm. as we speak, there is a show on pumpkin spice. <laughs> Welcome to Halloween cast. Anyway. Right. Um, <laughs> the Halloween podcast. So they, the kids knock on the door and they say, "You know, trick or treat." Have you ever gone? Yes. Yeah, trick. Thanks. And have they ever no. done anything to you utterly stupid? No, 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 no. Because those little kids, if you if you antagonize them, they have big brothers who um, will return and <laughs> tip over things, rob your house. I mean, there, there's I, I consider it a goodwill program for my neighborhood. I'll, I'm just nice. We'll just give the kids their candy. It's all good. Right. So, because we did have a couple of kids knock on the door once, uh, and they're like trick or treat, and so I, I gave them a couple of lollies, and I said to them, "But hang on, before you leave, what was your trick gonna be?" <laughs> And it's like, well, we don't know. They, they don't even come prepared anymore. No, no, no. Sorry. There's just no, there's no art to it. And hence why <laughs> my photo is screwed. Anyway. <laughs> right. Let's talk about, right. let's talk about let's writing. Let's talk about writing. Where shall we begin? Now. Well, I am, um, um, and Mark David, thank you for coming on the show. So I liked your, um, I liked that you have, you have a wealth of, publications out devoted to helping the the new writer and newbie writer um, writer just starting out so why don't you tell us just a little bit about your um, you know why you got into helping writers and uh, what is your a little bit about your journey uh, you know getting from you know point a no writing to point B telling people how to do it sure um, there's no pumpkin spice latte involved in the story. Excellent. That's I good, probably. Make, I just want to make that clear before I, <laughs> in case that's a, a requirement before I start. Yeah. Well, it would have been. <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, okay. We're good then. In fact, this probably we're goes good. back to before there was pumpkin spice latte, so there you go. Um, well, I um, hated writing and anything creative um, when I was growing up. Um, or at least I, that's what I thought. Really what was going on is I think that I was totally terrified of being judged for my creativity, and so I just shut the whole thing down. Um, and it really wasn't... I kind of joke that my muse tricked me into becoming a writer, and back when I was totally resistant, there were little little little, little chinks got, got, got pushed in, like... I got to do publicity for a, high, for a series of high school musicals and I began to work in publicity and, pub, and marketing and public relations and so I had to write. And then I got a job in a public relations office at a university in Montreal where the job was writing and suddenly I found myself a writer, but not a creative writer. Um, and um, as the years went on, of course I am writing and, I, and then I quit. I was a full-time freelance writer and editor all self-taught, by the way. Um, and one day, I was working at a Toronto magazine, and um, one of my, um, as a freelancer, one of the staff colleagues rushed up to me, and she said, "I just it was Monday morning. I just took this creative writing workshop on the weekend. You've got to take it." And of course, I made the sign with the cross, and I backed away very quickly and threw garlic <laughs> at her. <laughs> 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 and did all the things that I thought I could do to protect myself from such a horrible idea. Because in my mind, um, a, what would happen in a creative writing class or workshop was that you, you wrote, you stood up, you read what you wrote, the uh, machine guns came out, gunned you down, and you lay there in a pool of blood, <laughs> bleeding to death. And I really was not prepared to put myself through that. But she was uncharacteristically persistent. And I did sign up, and I did go, and it changed everything. It was, a, it was not that kind of a class at all, I'm pleased to say. Um, and I began to open up to creative parts of myself um, that had been shut down for as long as, as, long as I knew, as long mm. as I could remember. Interesting. And in fact, it was um, the woman who, 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 who taught the workshop was someone who I began to work with um, as a mentor, uh, she mentored me and kind of slowly um, pulled me out of this decades-long creative block that I had. Um, and one day she said to me, when I was, you know, we were, we were still working together, and she said, would you like to teach a section of my writing class? Like the, the, the workshop I had taken was, uh, was a non-credit class at the University of Toronto where I was, where I was living then. Um, 
And I said no because I didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she asked me again a few months later, and I said no. Um, and she asked me again a few months after that, and I said, let me think about it. Oh, she's, yeah, grinding the screws down. That's right. That's right. Um, and I had a dream. And my creative awakening at the time was very closely tied to a spiritual awakening, and I was paying attention to my dreams, and I, for a while, was actually seeing a Jungian therapist and working with my dreams. But this dream was so, was so blatantly obvious that you didn't need to know anything about dreams or symbolism or, 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 or anything like that to figure it out. Um, without going into the whole dream, in the very last piece of the dream that I remembered before I woke up, um, this woman says to her husband, hugely emotionally, I have to teach. And then I woke up. Oh. Right. That's and, pretty and awesome. it's, Yeah, I mean, you know, two by four would, would have been subtle compared to, <laughs> compared to that. And you woke up and she was standing over you going, you will teach my class. <laughs> like, oh, God. What are you so doing apparently here? I know where you live. Mm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Or you'll be forced to drink pumpkin spice latte not yet invented for the rest of your life. <laughs> so, That's it. That's it. You are doomed. Doomed, I tell That's you. Doomed. That's right. So I, so I did say yes, and I began to teach her class. And, and that, too, was, was, was kind of a transformational experience. Um, I really am getting to your, I really am getting to your question, just so you know. Um, no, no, that's yes, you are. You're getting there. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> um, but one of, the, one of the things that both the working with her did and teaching her material, which I then over time made into my own, was it taught me how to let go control. Of course, nobody I'm talking to, I'm sure, has control issues, but I certainly had major control issues, um, both in terms of my creation and in terms of teaching. I remember as I was preparing for the first class that I was teaching, I was, I was to teach of, of, of Carol's, um, I'm sitting at my laptop in my Toronto apartment, scripting everything like down to the, down to the last comma. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Sorry, I hand, teach. Let me just laugh at you. <laughs> I know, exactly. But I mean, my hand cramped up so much, I couldn't type. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you didn't even use a three body okay, edit. I, and I never, I've, you know, I've never done that since. I don't outline. I've never outlined, and um, I only make the, the the vaguest of notes when I'm teaching or or, or leading a workshop. Um, it's very much in the moment, and that's what I teach. So getting to, you know, getting to your question, that's kind of how the writing began. That's how the teaching began. Um, the books grew from that. But I think what happened was I was so blocked. Um, I started relatively late, um, that I felt that my experience as someone who got, kind of got dragged into this kicking and screaming mm -hmm. was really perfect for the newbie who didn't know what he or she was doing and might have been very scared well, uh, because that's how I came in. What was it like uh, though for your first lesson when you walked in through the doors and there's I don't know, however many people, five, ten, twenty, twenty, <laughs> did you just look and go, oh, shit. Um, well, you know, one of the things that, that, that Carol suggested I do, and that really helped. Um, Imagine everyone naked. No. <laughs> that never helped. That, would not, oh. that wouldn't have helped, but <laughs> um, uh, no, was to actually get to the classroom before they did. Yeah, so they trickle and, in. And to really own the space before they walked in the door. Yeah. Um, and that really did help. And yes, of course, I was nervous um, mm. at first time. But I found that, and this has been true every time I've done anything public, whether it's been teaching or giving a talk or some, some time, or, or a teleseminar, that the moment I start, the scared part of me isn't even isn't isn't even in the room anymore mm. well here's, um, here's a question though because you're both you know you're a teacher Catherine. you're a teacher or pretend to be i don't know what you do um <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't either i just you know show off <laughs> hey, i don't know what <laughs> i do or anybody else <laughs> professor <laughs> I, was the anyway. teacher, I was here first yes um 
in pre-show we are talking about, I was in a course for two days, um, completely non-writing related. But one thing I noticed was the guy giving a lecture, he started his lecture with a question, just a general question. And um, someone actually made a comment behind me going, well, isn't that what we're here for? Uh, you know, <laughs> he asked, he just, he just threw a question and he said, you know, who, who here knows much about the new high definition resolutions of TVs, whatever it was. Um, and that was his way of sort of just getting into the flow of this is what he's going to lecture about. Um, yeah. Except for, yeah, my old boss, the arrogant piece of work, turned around and said, well, I know everything. <laughs> um, and the lecturer's looking at him like, really? Well, why don't you get up here? What I want to know is from, do, do you do something similar? You know, Catherine as well, do you come in and say, okay, who here knows about Shakespeare? And just to no. try, do you do that to get a gauge or do you do it just so you can get into your flow of what you're going to talk about? I'll tell you exactly what I do if, if the size of the group allows it. First of all, I don't lecture mm. um, because that just puts people to sleep. Um, but the first thing I do after I introduce myself um, is if the group is small enough, I invite them to introduce themselves to me. Mm. I'll go around the room and ask them... Um, you know, who, who you are, uh, why you're here, and, you know, where you are in your writing. Hmm. Um, and that is, that is, for me personally, far more important and far more revealing um, and leads and guides me better in terms of what I'm going to say, because I don't have a fixed lecture. I mean, I have, obviously, I have thoughts and ideas and philosophies and, and ways of doing things, but I want, I want to give the people in the room um, what they came for, not what I'm there for, not what I think they came for. And it's no different if I'm working one-on-one -on -one as, you know, as a coach or a mentor, which I, I, which I also do now. Um, you know, people say, well, what's your program? I don't have a program. I'm here to work with you with whatever it is you need, not with whatever it, whatever it is I think you need. Mm. So um, one of the things that I was taught early on too, and I think that anybody who teaches or does any kind of counseling work would recognize this, even if not consciously, which is I listen for the question underneath the question. Right. Do you have um, a good lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that one too. Oh, right. but, no, I, I, I want to know, not what, again, not why you think you came to my workshop or to, or to a coaching session, but I want to get underneath that because very often we don't know why we're doing things. Hmm. Have you had uh, it, though, that people get it? I don't know. There seems to be a little bit of a misconception. If you go to a course or you have a writing coach, that they're going to basically write the book for you. I've certainly had people approach me who, who want me to, to ghostwrite um, or do something like that. And I'm just I'm, I'm not interested. Mm. Um, I'm pretty fussy about who I'll work with, not because I'm some kind of a snob, um, or maybe it is because I'm some kind of a snob, but <laughs> not only because I'm some kind of a snob, but because I want this to be a pleasurable experience for me too. You know, mm. I want to I want to attract the kind of client or the kind of student um, that is fun for me to work with and and um, who is open mm. to um, perhaps exploring their creativity and their, and their craft in new ways and. If they're not, if it's me just banging them on the head or them banging me on the head, then it just gives everybody a headache and why am I even there? Well, so, speaking of ahead. headache, I'm going to try and pronounce this, but so you were doing your course, you're starting to teach and that sort of thing and it unlocked your ability to sort of write creative, creatively is the word. Um, <laughs> the Moon Quest, is it the Quintana Trilogy? Yes, yes, perfect oh. you, you get extra points. You get extra points because he's very good. He's my pronunciation guy. That's why I give okay, him. Okay, well, points. okay. Yeah. So yes, you get you you get the points for pronunciation. It's not Quintana, it's Quintana. Yes, right. And you see, we oh, had yeah. a guest on, least Quintana. Well, I said Quintana because she had a U and an I in the name, and I got dragged over the coals for that one. So I thought, <laughs> well, I might as well try this one. But <laughs> how does this come about then? How do you go from you know, being in that PR space, that teaching space, and going, right, I'm going to write, well, a trilogy. I mean, that's a pretty big undertaking. Well, you're assuming, you're making a huge assumption there, yes. which, is that I actually, which, <laughs> which is that I actually knew what I was doing. Um, 
Well, I we like to give our guests the benefit of a doubt. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, and, I, and, I, and I do appreciate that, but there's no need. Um, so um, I've written now 12 books, which is kind of boggles my mind. And a good number of those um, kind of happened to me rather than me sitting down and saying, I'm going to write a book. And the Moon Quest, my very first book, um, which I didn't know was going to be a trilogy, by the way, so I, I, was, pre I was protected from that at the time, mm. um, happened similarly. I was actually teaching a writing workshop that, that, that evening. And um, I led the group through an exercise to write, because my workshops usually involve writing in the workshop. And normally when I do this, um, I just kind of either walk around the room or go for a walk or just stick around and make sure no one's having any, any problems. But I'd worked with, I think it was a group of women, I'd worked with these five or six women for a while now. Mm -hmm. And a little voice, I guess the, the mischievous voice of my mischievous muse said, okay, you do the exercise. Big guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, and I've learned to listen. I don't always like what I hear, but I have learned to listen. And so I did. And um, what I wrote was this very odd story, or piece of a very, very odd piece of a very odd story, mm -hmm. that when I went back to it the next day, the day after that, the day after that, became the opening of a fantasy novel that I knew absolutely nothing about, except as I wrote it. Did you like fantasy, though? Was there a, I, yes, yeah. I had read a lot of fantasy, but, certain, but, but, but never in my, in my wildest conscious dreams had I ever thought about writing a fantasy novel. It certainly wasn't anything that I was saying one day I want to write a fantasy novel. I could picture um, that, though, in your class, though. You said, all right, guys, look, I need you to, we're going to do this thing. I'm going to do it as well. And you just... Uh, oh, no, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even tell them I was going to do it. Ah. it was, once they were writing... Well, here's the thing. I'll tell you what, the, the exercise was, 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 was a little unusual. I had them pick a tarot card. Oh. Um, and okay. I led them through a kind of an open eye visualization based on a card they picked um, to get really into the card and then, and then to let the card guide them into what to write. So once they were writing, the little voice, the little voice of my muse said, pick a card. Mm -hmm. So I picked mm -hmm. And I did with that card what I, what I had guided them into doing, and I began to write. And then someone uh, was going, Mark. Mark, we've, we've finished. Oh, sorry. I was getting carried away. <laughs> no, I, I, I am pretty good about keeping, even, even then, I was pretty good about keeping an eye on things. And, and usually in those situations, because it is a workshop and because there's time involved, I don't let them write. I don't usually let the writing go on for, for longer than 15 or 20 minutes just so we can keep going. Mm -hmm. um, Really but yes, I mean, I, I don't know what possessed me the next morning to pick it up and, and keep going. Mm. Um, and perhaps if I... Uh, had known just how challenging it was going to be at all kinds of levels, I might not have, but I did. And as I say, it became the first draft of a novel that I only discovered each, you know, word by word as I was writing it. Um, some, at some point after the first draft, maybe even after the second draft, I had a notion that it would be a trilogy and that the, that the subsequent books would be called The Star Quest and The Sun Quest. Mm. Um, but I didn't really know anything about them either. And, and, and the thing about the Quintana trilogy, as it emerged, is that each of the stories, each of the, each of the books is kind of self-contained. Um, the second book, really, the second book, the main character is the daughter of the main character in the first book. And the third book is the is her son, and so yeah. it kind of goes generally, generationally, yeah. Yeah. and each story does come to its own ending, although the, the, although the final book does wrap it all up in a way that okay. I could not have foreseen. Hmm. So <laughs> They always surprise you a little bit, don't they, your well, characters? They, more, more, more than a little bit. I was, when I was writing the, the very last scene of the, of the Star Quest, which is book two, um, and I should say that I began the first draft of the Star Quest three times before I could finish it. Um, but that's a whole other story. But I actually got to the, got to the last scene of the, of, the first draft, of, the, of the first draft 11 years after I began it. Um, the ending totally, totally surprised me. It was not at all what I had expected. There you go. Well, how did you come up with the term Quintana? Um, because the name of the, 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 name of the land 
at least in books one and book three, is Quintana. Where that came from, God only knows and God ain't talking. <laughs> uh, and why the apostrophe so, in the middle? Yeah. Say, well, that's the same thing. I mean, all, there were, I, I remember my, my cousin bought the book for my uncle, who is now, I, I mean, he's now like 91, but then he probably would have been in his, in his 80s. Yeah. And his response, I guess after he read it, uh, which she communicated to me because we're uh, thousands of miles in a country apart now, was um, why all the apostrophes? Because a lot of the <laughs> well, it's typical no, fantasy. Sounds right? like something a relative would say. Yeah, Thanks. I know, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, not, not I love the book or... No, no. You know, why all the apostrophes? And you know, yeah. I, ha I have no answer. Um, something my mother would say is like, well, yeah. you know, I found 13 commas. What do you have to say about that? You know, it's like, right, I don't, right. know. Well, I don't you know. know. People ask where the names came from. And again, you're assuming that I make this stuff up. Um, and I don't. I simply write what comes out of the pen mm. or, the mm -hmm. key, or, or, or out of my fingers onto the keyboard. I actually did write the first two drafts of the MoonQuest longhand. Um, but... Um, and several of the names did change mm. multiple times. Um, and not all the names have apostrophes, um, but many of them do. And, you know, I actually bought a whole bunch of apostrophes at a closeout sale and I had to use them up. That's, that's my, <laughs> I had that, to use that, them all up. That's, that's, they had a best before date, I had to use them. So that's my story. You you, <laughs> that makes more sense. Are you a fan oh, well, of... It makes about as much sense as any, as any other answer I could possibly give you. So right. we might as well go with that one. <laughs> so, all right, no, that works for me. Are you are you a fan of Terry Brooks by any chance? Um, I have not read his stuff. Here's the thing about when I was writing when I was writing fantasy, um, I had read lots of fantasy until that point, but I didn't I did not want to be reading fantasy while I was writing it. Yeah. Oh, it's just yeah. the concept of you know in one book you have a, a character and then the second one is their son or daughter and then the right. third one that's a very Terry Brooks thing to the is point it? that by the time he's done like eight or nine books people are going seriously. <laughs> How big is this family? Yeah. Right. Well, well, the good news for me, I suppose, maybe, maybe, or maybe not for the readers, is that book three, the Sun Quest, really wraps everything up. And although I could go back and do little little mini stories about some of the characters, there really is nothing to write beyond the ending. Beyond the ending hmm. of the Sun Quest, well, so it's done. I really dig the covers on these. Uh, and that oh. seems to be a common thing as well. People say, these covers are amazing. Um, how did you come up with that? Did you obviously approach someone to do your covers and yeah. say, well, go for it? The, the, there was a, um, a fellow I'd worked with before. Um, he lives in Thailand now. He's British. Mm. Um, who I found totally serendipitously on Facebook. You know, just full of, full of stories like this one, but I, I, found him, I found him on Facebook when I was looking for a designer for the, my second book, which is my first book for writing, The Voice of the Muse Answering the Call to Write. And um, I approached him. This, it's kind of complicated. I have somebody interested in, in filming the three Quintana stories. Right. Cool. And, and we approached Richard... Um, at one point to design um, kind of spec movie posters um, okay. for the three stories. The Moon Quest already had a different cover at that time. This, the, the cover you see now is the second edition of the Moon Quest. This is the cover for The Voice of the Muse, the second edition of The Voice of the Muse. And um, I, hadn't actually <laughs> I hadn't actually written the Star Quest and the Sun Quest at that point, although I had sort of an idea. Mm. Of what was going to what, what was going to be, um, and so I basically told Richard the stories, and gave him some kind of some thematic ideas based on what I knew of the stories, mm. um, and uh, the the first book, um, the Moon Quest, it's a representation of something that appears in in the book called the Wall of Traders where um, st in the book, st uh, stories have been banned and storytellers have been put to death. A nice little metaphor for my own creative blocks, although I certainly <laughs> didn't see it when I was writing it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and 
Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, like everything else, the writer is always the last to know. We are um, the last to know. Our characters yeah. know before we do. <laughs> yeah. So um, what happens is that people who are people who are traitors, and that include the storytellers, get their heads chopped off and staked onto this wall of traitors. Anyhow, so the the, nice. the, the okay. yeah, you know, it's very Game of Thrones of you. Um, which I also haven't read, but um, <laughs> um, so so it's a representation of the Wall of Traders. The second book um, in, the, in, in book two, the Star Quest, the the um, the antagonist is a very very nasty piece of business, a, a woman. The, the and the main, and the and the hero is a woman as well, um, and um, that's kind of representation of something of, of a, her hand doing is a representation of something that happens in the book. And the sun quest, um, the snakes are there for a reason too. And the irony is that when I wrote the, when I gave him the idea, I didn't know that the snakes were going to be in the sun quest. They were already, they were in the star quest. And we just threw them in there because we needed a cover for the sun quest. And when I wrote the sun quest, the snakes were, again, were important. So again, one of the things that I tell, I tell students and I tell people like you guys who are one of the secrets of my excess <laughs> is um, the stories, the stories, the story and its characters is, are much smarter than I am. And my job is to get, just get out of the way and let them pretty much have their way with me. And, and, and when I was writing the sun quest, things that I put in the moon quest that I had no idea why they were there. Mm. They just, that's what needed to be there. So I put it there. Um, made sense. No, no, that that makes that makes total sense. So let um, me let's um I like that I like that you that you were taken over because I think a lot of us are. Um what do you have you have some I I wanted to move over to to work with with some of the things that you could help our readers with. Sure. You have um on your website you you talk about um some of the books that you have on writing where you mm -hmm. talk about um inspiration, um you have tools and techniques to keep the words flowing how to um, propel your book forward. What kind of advice do you give people? We're going into National Novel Writing Month. Um, what kind of advice do you give to newbies? You know what the flow feels like when you're working on a project. What would you tell um, somebody who's like, okay, November 1st, Sunday, I'm going to start a novel. I'm going to write 50,000 words this month. I'm going to do it. What, how could you help them? What, what, can, you, uh, what can you tell us to help our, to help our newbie writers? The first thing I'm going to say, which has to do with National Novel, Novel Writing Month specifically, is don't make yourself crazy. <laughs> oh, come on. That's the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Well, coming from a place where I think all creative people are, are very easy to judge themselves and very, and very easy to let themselves be judged, um, by all means, set the goal of finishing your draft, but don't beat yourself, but don't beat yourself up if you can't. Okay, fair enough. That's, I mean, I think that that would be the biggest piece of advice I would have for something for any kind of event like this, which is by you know go for it by all means go for it, but don't don't um, don't, don't feel, feel like your failure. failure. Quote, win. That's right, exactly. Yeah. Because you know, writing a book, writing a novel, is a long-term commitment. Even if you write your first draft in the in the month, <laughs> you've got a lot yeah. of work. In you so you know if you finish on december 15th it's not the end of the world if you finish on march 15th it's not the end of the world the fact that you've actually launched into it and begun it i think is the biggest congratulations and the most important congratulations you deserve so that's that's the first thing that i would say which has nothing at all to do with craft it's just about with perhaps attitude. your own mm. attitude self-esteem you know that, yeah. that, that kind of so um uh, Go ahead. I was going to say a question. I'm going to, I'm going to nitpick, and it's going to sound snarky. Um, Go ahead. As a man, how can you birth your book? <laughs> I'm just curious. Well, we told you, you we didn't get off easy here. <laughs> if written a book that said um, birthing your babies, then we might have an argument. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know where it comes out of. Uh, where, where does my book baby come from? <laughs> it was adopted. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. Adopted. Well, let's just say we're speaking metaphorically um, mm -hmm. rather, than rather than literally, and we don't need to deal with bo bodily orifices on, on, on this occasion. Oh, got my nice hopes up. Nice workaround. He got you on that one. He did. Admit it. Well, how did you come up with this then? What was the 
the concept behind saying, okay, we're going to talk about birthing your book. Okay, that's the, um, and this will kind of sort of lead into um, Catherine's question as well. That's okay. Sometimes it takes us a while to get there. It's cool. That's, that, that's okay, you know. Um, <laughs> I, I can have my pumpkin spice latte well into November, so I'm good. There you go. So we have time. <laughs> I have time. So um, I, I had written most of the first draft of The Voice of the Muse, my first book on writing. Um, this goes back to 2007, 2008. Um, and I was in Sedona, where I used to live, Sedona, Arizona, um, giving, I was invited to give a talk at a, at a bookstore there. And I'd already given one talk about, about writing to promote the Moon Quest. And I was looking for a new topic. And when I lived in Sedona, if you don't know this, Damon, it's a very, very, meta, very metaphysical kind of place. A mm -hmm. um, little, little on the woo-woo side, perhaps, <laughs> to some. Um, uh, but yeah. one of the questions I used to get a lot when I was living there, and I did, and I did do some, teach some writing when I was there, too, was, you know, I've been to a psychic, or, or I've had a dream, or I just feel intuitively that I have a book to write. Um, or I, people keep telling me to write a book, mm -hmm. but I have no idea what it's about. Right. And so when I was thinking about a topic for this um, bookstore talk at uh, Well Read Coyote, um, this this title came to me: "Birthing Your Book," even if you don't know what it's about, because it was a very it was a very Sedona kind of topic. Mm. Okay. And birthing your and, and that became a very short section in the Voice of the Muse. I, I took my notes from my talk and I just added it to the book. And now we, you know, now we jump ahead a number of years. And I've just finished writing, um, I, th I think I just finished organic screenwriting. Um, and I just thought, and I, and I, somebody must have said something to me that triggered something. And I thought, you know, this, there's, there's more to this birthing your book business than <laughs> just the couple of chapters I've written. Um, and maybe... Um, a book on more specifically on getting your book together and out would be helpful in its own way, just as the voice of music is really more about writing in general was, was helpful in its way. And so that's kind of where, where that I would, where the notion for the book came from and the kind of the title and the, and the concept of birthing a book just happened when I was looking for a, a, um, a, a topic to talk about oh, well you should get together with beth barani because she's the midwife of books i, I know we, we're, we're 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 twitter we're twitter friends and i did i did one of her um her twitter chats um a couple of oh, months yeah. ago that's how we met huh. that's yeah. right that is how we, i forgot about that i never remember how i yeah. met anybody so yes i, I know <laughs> i know but i saw you i saw you and i thought you did a nice job with ask a ask a coach and that's that's where we where we all started this yeah cool oh, i just think that'd be interesting as a course you know you could come out in the full medical garb with a rubber gloves, snap, snap. Like, We're going to birth this book. Let's get this show started. And, you know, very nasty looking forward to this, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> and the woman, and everybody screams and runs out the, uh, runs out the building. Nice. Well, I, actually have, I actually have had some women who have taken, not, not, who, haven't, who haven't been offended by the title, but who said, you know, you make it sound easy and birthing is not easy. Yeah, I, I will concede that, but I'll also say that birthing your book um, is not easy. It just doesn't have to be um, as painful as or any kind of writing as as it often is. Mm. Well, I can't comment on that, and, and I refuse to. After what I, I post, look, you learn the hard way sometimes. You post a picture up about dads being smarter than mums, and the whole world seems to melt down with that anyway. <laughs> And all of a sudden, everybody has something to say. Well, there you go. Surprise. I know. It's good. <laughs> so, what about... You are um, hilarious. So, we've got the, you know, kind of the birthing the book metaphor, and it's, you know, sometimes breathing helps, sometimes it doesn't. That's that's part of that, for me, that's part of that metaphor. And what sometimes you, breathing um, helps, and sometimes it doesn't. So, there you go. Just hold your breath. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. And then pass out, and then you don't feel anything. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, yeah. Right. I heard that too. Right. Uh, right. No. <laughs> so, so you've got, we've got, you know, 
you've got that idea of, of you know of getting getting it out you don't know quite what you want to write about how do you start somebody you know you're in Sedona I think that you know, to your point yes you you're in a a woo-woo space. I live in Northern California. We can get way out there sometimes ourselves. Um, how do you how do you start people? How did you help these people who are like, I've got something in me, but I don't know what it is. So pretty much the way I began the moon quest, which is just start writing. Write anything. It doesn't matter what you start. It doesn't matter how you start because very often the starting, what you st how you start is only a way in. It's not it's not the book or the story or the poem or the screenplay or whatever, whatever it is you're writing. It's not necessarily the thing itself. Hmm. One of the things that, I'm, that okay. I really stress um, at the beginning, um, and maybe even the middle as well, <laughs> and <laughs> and sometimes all, all the way to the end, is yeah. that um, you kind of apply the, the, the morning pages idea that, that, okay. um, that um, Cameron. Oh, her name is, thank you. Julia Cameron. That's right. Your name just kind of vanished from my head. That's um, so quite all right. <laughs> gone, um, gone. So was, but apply that to your entire book. In other words, Julia Cameron talks about morning pages as a way to clear the decks so you can so you can write, and right. Natalie Goldberg talks about this the same kind of thing for little, as a little short writing exercises, writing practice. She calls it. Um, right. What I do, and I call it writing on the muse stream. Uh, same idea, but what I, what I say is those are all fabulous techniques and they don't have to be exercises. They can be your book or at least your, or at least your first draft. Oh, okay. and, so and, and what that entail involves is you write. What I used to do when I, when I, when I taught in, in a classroom with a blackboard is that the first thing I'd do, I'd walk in and I'd, and I'd write on the board, write, don't think. You don't think, you don't stop, you don't edit, you don't censor, you just keep pushing forward. You don't look back, you don't go back, you just keep pushing forward. Um, you, in fact, you don't even push forward, you let the pen pull you forward. You simply okay. allow the story to emerge without you, think, without you having to think about it, which is why I don't outline, because I can't, I, you can't outline and do, it and, and, and do this. Um, that is exactly how I wrote The Moon Quest. I hadn't a clue what the story was. Next, yeah, because I do that. Um, I have I have clients who want to do that. They they will sit and spiral around the first chapter for months if you let them. You know, they they go back and they do it again and they do it again and then again. It's like, no, we, let's, we want let's to get, propel you out towards the rest of the book. <laughs> well, we want them because we're all we're all we're all closet perfectionists and we want it to be perfect, and we don't believe that we can write the second sentence until the first sentence is perfect. Yeah, and I think the school system has created that as well. Well, for many it years. certainly hasn't helped. Um, yeah. The problem is you can be writing that first sentence the rest of your life if that's your yes. attitude. Um, yes. And speaking of school systems, I told you at the beginning um, that I, you know, at the beginning of a class or a workshop, I'll say, you know, why are you here and why, you know, what are you looking for? And one of the things I used to hear a lot, not quite so much anymore, but I used to hear it a lot was I used to love to write until... Oh, and Aww. that until almost always involved a teacher or a college professor um, who said that this per that you know that 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 this person was not doing it the right way. Uh, that just breaks your heart, doesn't it? It absolutely. Um, yeah. And so yes, I mean, there is no. I mean, I have I have kind of tongue in cheek rules for writing. And the first rule is there are no rules. Mm -hmm. um, you do, and I have my way of teaching and my way of, of approaching it, but you know, if it doesn't work for you, don't do it. <laughs> you know? I mean, try it by all means, but the, the rule for writing that's the most important one is do what works for you. Hmm. I, yeah, but there's also the other one that says, you know, I used to love writing until I had to get a job. <laughs> oh wait, that was mine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, see. I still love writing, and I want it to be my job. That's our conflict. Right. Well, and that you know, and 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 that that's a reality. But the, but the job and the writing are not necessarily related. Mm. You know, no. you can't you 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 if you have to write, you write. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's now, true too. 
you know, people ask me why I write, and the answer is because, I, because I've tried stopping. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> hmm. I've tried quitting. I can't. Um, it's like a drug. It's like a bad, like a bad like, addiction. Definitely. It's like a bad yeah. addiction. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is, I, have, I don't think I've shared this story before, but except with friends, but a couple of years ago, um, I was working on, what I was working on, it may have been, I've adapted the Contender Trilogy as, as state screenplays, but I also, a couple of years ago, wrote first drafts, because I'm insane, of each story mm -hmm. as a stage musical. Oh, wow. You are insane. Um, yeah, I am insane. Yes, thank you. I mean, I... Well, thank, thank you for the thank you for the validation. I, yeah, <laughs> I, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, these stories are very are 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 very much a part of me um, in ways I can I can't even explain or describe. Mm -hmm. But after coming off, I think the 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 the, the Sun Quest stage play uh, stage musical, I was so emotionally drained, um, and such a wreck. Um, that I said, you know what, I'm done. Um, I'm never going to write another goddamn book ever again. <laughs> uh -huh. or, or words to that effect, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, words, yes. That's the polite version of what I, right. what I have to actually <laughs> say. <laughs> that's the, that's the, uh, the, uh, the, the cleaned up version, so Damien yep. doesn't have to do anything in post. But that's all right, just put a rooster over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I, you know, I was just, I was, I was serious. I was so yeah. fried. Um, and it's you no, know, I mean, my books get good reviews and they have a, a devoted readership. It's not like I'm, it's not like I'm J.K. Rowling, right? So I, I can't say, well, it's hard work, but, uh, you know, gazillions of people are reading my stuff. and, and All and, these and fans. Yeah. Going <laughs> over it. So it was like, why am I doing, you know, what is the point? Why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. And that lasted about two weeks. <laughs> um, I'm actually surprised now, in retrospect, that it lasted that, that, it lasted that long. Um, and after two weeks, my strike was over and <laughs> with no concessions. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah we stay away. Were you like, because if I'm not working on a project, I am very unhappy in a very profound way that I can't even express well. But if I'm working on a book, that makes me, everything else is fine. Cause I've got, I've got this creative project that churns around. Is that what you found too? Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's not even, I mean, right now I, I just finished a book. So, and it just, it just, it just came out uh, a novel. Sarah's here just came out actually on my birthday earlier this month. And um, so, you know, I'm not, I don't write the last, I don't draw up the last period in the final draft and then start, <laughs> start the first word of the first, of the next book. No, no, of course not. Yeah, uh, of course not. But, it, but that, that's different than just, than quote, giving it up. I mean, that, resting. Right. Between which is, is which is, is which is final. pretty much what I thought I was doing. I was seriously thought, I was so upset. I was seriously thought that I was doing that. And really, I mean, I think all my friends rolled their eyes when I said it. Um, but I, but in my mind, I was serious, and uh, uh, you know, I I think that for a lot of creative people, whether they're whether they're writers or artists or or musicians, um, the creative act is as important as breathing, and it's you're not a fully functioning person. I don't even mean in the world; I just mean within yourself. Um, yeah if you let that creative part of you atrophy. Hmm. Well, you can tell when Catherine's not writing because she ends up, you know, hey, how was your week? Yeah, fine, whatever. And then, um, <laughs> and then when she's in the middle of writing, it's, hey, where's those she's show like, notes? Oh, the show notes. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's bad either way, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> well, it, it is. And I guess my attitude at the time was, if I'm going to be miserable, I must be, must be miserable not writing than writing. And now my attitude is, if I'm going to be miserable, I must be miserable writing than not writing. So there you go. That's, yeah, that's where I am. I'm mis miserable and spacey because I'm working on something. Mm. Yeah, sorry about the show notes this week. <laughs> I didn't really need them. <laughs> I was working on Sarah's year, and Sarah's year was very different. It was, it's, I mean, it's not fantasy. It's my, it's, it's my first novel that is not fantasy. Oh, um, very good. It's not romance, is it? No. It's oh, good. Set, That's right. Um, going to hang up. 
it's set in my hometown, which is Montreal. Um, it's, it's my first book set in Canada, um, apart from my memoir, which is, of course, only set there because I haven't been born there. Mm. Um, um, and really drew on you know, very real parts of my, my life and, and, and history, um, and was emotionally challenging to write because of that. Um, mm. Uh, I wasn't fun to be around, but I think it would have been a whole lot less fun to be around if I had said I'm not doing it. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, we've got a few things to carry on with. Just before we do, where can people find you out on the internet? Certainly. Um, you can find me where Catherine found me on Twitter, um, <laughs> um, which is Mark David Gerson, is G E R S O N, Mark with a K. Um, all one word, and that's my username almost anywhere online. Um, it's my username on Twitter, it's my username on, on Facebook, um, which is where I'm most active, so by all means look for me on Facebook. My website is markdavidgerson.com. Um, my Amazon author page is amazon.com slash author slash markdavidgerson. So if you just Google look, you, yeah, you'll find, <laughs> yeah. and please do, I'm always happy to hear from people. Yeah, do. Definitely check out his books, like I said, um, I like the look of the moon quest and that sort of stuff. Um, if you feel like going through birthing without the, um, what do they call that stuff they inject you with, then go through that. The epidural. The epidural. <laughs> grab Don't book. write like you had an epidural. We can actually make that sense. Oh. <laughs> hey, I, I think we need that as a title, a chapter <laughs> I don't title. Know if I could do that in good faith. <laughs> Come on. Don't, don't write like you've had an epidural. <laughs> Mmm, ideas. Um, <laughs> now, feel free to stick so you your... Have, you're part of the quill right now, Damien. Well, right? Fine. So... <laughs> yeah, I've got stuff to do. Um, anyway, feel free to stick around. We've got a couple of things that we do, like a prompt. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to read the prompt out, Catherine? Sure. So, as, um, as you might be conscious... Everybody should know this. If you're listening to the podcast, you know that Nano Write More is coming up. It starts on uh, Sunday the 1st. It's uh, writing a novel in, in a month, 50,000 words. Mm -hmm. And so um, the prompt is, what would you write if you were going to spend a month writing it? Because you have to spend a month with this book following you around in your head. Would you write something funny? Would you write something silly? What would get you through the dark days of November or the bright days of November, depending on what... If you're at the top of the globe or the bottom of the globe. Mm. Um, what if you jumped out of your genre and wrote something completely different for the month? Well, I don't think Mark can do that because he just did. With yes, he did. Book. I, I, I did actually wrote jumped, out of your, jumped out of your genre. Hmm. I wrote the Sun Quest during NaNoWriMo a couple of years ago. That was my, my only NaNoWriMo experience was writing the Sun Quest. I actually did it in three weeks, which totally blew wow. my mind. Yeah, wow, so I actually, that's awesome. I'm actually, I'm actually owed a week. <laughs> yeah. not, you can tap, sure. you can tack it on. It could, you know, you could do that. You could do that this, you know, put it into December because you know you banked it up from last year. Right. I think that's fair. Well, add interest plus interest. Hey, you know, I mean, there you go. Plus interest, <laughs> nano interest. <laughs> it's, it's like buying car. It's like buying carbon credits. <laughs> that's right. Nano. So it was two years ago. It was, it was a week. It must be worth at least you know a week and a half by now. There you go. There you go. I think you can go with that. Who's gonna know? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's your mentality, isn't it, Catherine? Who's going to know? I already wrote the book. I'll just hand it in at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I like the spirit of the project, which is just do it. Um, but the camaraderie is marvelous. And so for people who like to have um, more of a group experience and don't really, and, you know, they feel, you know, lonely writing the books, Nano is really great for that. You meet people, you can go to write-ins. I mean, there's all sorts of other pieces to it that make the experience just a lot easier for a newbie writer to jump into. So that's that's what I that's why November is a great month to do this. Hmm. Let's do a uh, tortured sentence. Let's do a tortured sentence. Next time, don't put the Ryan farces on the rocket slab. <laughs> tortured sentences. Now that was actually taken from one of Mark's. Birthing classes. Um, <laughs> I knew you were gonna. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> and by that predictable this week. <laughs> God. 
All right. Some Wait. days, some days not. Do you want to take a shot at this? This is uh, from um, one of my students who are trying to get their heads around Jonathan Swift's modest proposal. So there's the, the setup, and, and the student just didn't make it at all. Right. Well, it says, Also in the 21st century, people and countries around the world inhabit cannibals. This is rumoured to be true, yet who knew that this satirist essay could have influenced some to actually do it? They, they inhabit cannibals. Well, they jump inside them and They're live. They're parasites. They're parasites. <laughs> yeah. And countries, for that matter. Could you imagine the country of Australia, that landmass, going, there's a cannibal, let's go on. Anyway. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> just, sometimes they just can't shake shake it all out and, and, and write what's in their poor head. So that's a, that was what that one was. I, when I saw that the other day, I thought, oh, I'm so sorry, we're using this. Mm, well, I gave some writing advice to our apprentice slash trainee yesterday because he's in, he's in year 11. They've got some research project thing to do. And okay. he says, oh, I've got, I'm up to the last bit. I've got to write the outcomes of my research project. So I went, well, that should be fairly straightforward. He's like, oh. It's, it's got to be like 2,000 words. Wow. Like, well, that's only four, four or five pages. You should be fine. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but that's a lot of words. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I hate that. That's so many words. <laughs> yeah. And I said to him, you know what? In all honesty, if you wrote something that was really, really good, that was only 1,000 words, that's far better than having 2,000 words with you saying, look, I really, 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 really enjoyed doing this project. Right. I Thank said, you. Exactly. A... <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. I said, they're not going to fail you if you write a really concise, clear piece of 1,000 words over some rubbish for 2,000 words just because you yes. needed to make a number. That is exactly right. Mm. I said, so you'll be working... And, they fail, and, they, and he did it, and they failed him, right? <laughs> well, no. Yeah. I said, so <laughs> you'll be doing this on the weekend then because he's got to hand it in. And he goes, uh, oh, yeah, I guess so. I said, so you'll do it tomorrow? He's like, no, I'm going out tomorrow. <laughs> 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 so I can see that next week. I go, how do you do your research projects? Like, well, I asked for an extension. <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, he said, I didn't have enough time. That's mm. what they'll say. Mm, yeah, because, you know, the partying really cut into that, didn't mm. it? <laughs> I just think the whole word count thing, I don't know why it exists, really, for, especially for high school students who... And look, I was the same when I was in school. You, you focus in on that. You're like, mm, mm -hmm. man, I've sort of said everything I really wanted to say in a concise way in 900 words. But I've got to get 1,500 out of this. This is crap. Just add think, a lot of varies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the, the reason that you need to give them word counts, because I'm the same way. I'm like, look, if you have said everything you're going to say, I'm good. Hmm. I mean, you might be brilliant. And if it's short, 500 words, I don't care. Um, but what it is, is, is that, that students ask the question, the, the, oftentimes professors are responding to student questions, well, you know, how long should it be? And if I say, as long as it takes for you to convince me, you know, that you're mm. right, that is unacceptable in their heads. And so you have to say, okay, I need 1,492 words. Oh. <laughs> I need you to count them. Count. And it's just a way of giving them a parameter. Can't you just say it, it needs to be... Well, it's got to be as long as it needs to be. I do if... try that. You should see them twitch. It's 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 just it, it, it they start everybody's eyes start getting a tick. It's like no, uh, but how you... long? How long? How long? So that's why. Then you have the smart ass who turns in a two word essay that says I'm right. <laughs> yeah, can... yeah, or the the one who in the existential class it just turns into a blank piece of paper. Oh. We've seen it all. <laughs> I've seen it all. I, you know, it's like, and it's like, no, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to give me a little more than that. Hmm. And you, you don't even need their name on it because you can hold a blank sheet. I've got Kevin. I know this was you. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Get out. It matches the blank look on your face. <laughs> right. <laughs> hmm. Shall I put the letter F on here, or where would you like it shoved? Right. Now, <laughs> hence, I'm not a teacher. Um, yeah like that delivered <laughs> let's do a word of the week now this one comes from a word a day with Anu Garg and it's anodyne yeah right anodyne relieving pain or soothing bland or insipid not likely to provoke or offend clearly not me um, clearly not the show <laughs> no anodyne so there you go try and use that somewhere um, now Mark is it 
anyone you want to give a shout out to? No. <laughs> no. 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 Just, just, all, just all the writers, uh, both the nano writers and the non nano writers. Say, try saying that 10 times quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I would just want to throw out encouragement and uh, an invitation to non judgment and do your best to have to have fun oh, there you go catherine is anyone you want to say hi to um oh i can get a shout out to uh, the tiny person that i'm taking uh, trick-or-treating tomorrow uh, my granddaughter <laughs> is going to dress up like Belle from beauty and the beast her mother wanted her to dress up like a an avenger a superhero because you know we're very you know, feminist in the household and the kid's going to be, you know, strong and uh, powerful. She's got the whole agenda going on. And I guess another little girl came over with this pretty big yellow ball dress, you know, from the, from the ball scene in the Disney movie. And apparently the Cameron took one look at the ball dress and the Avengers were out. In <laughs> fact, we are going for Pretty Pretty Princess. So just want to give a shout out to everybody who wants to be a Pretty Pretty Princess Go for it tonight, tomorrow night. Well, hey, tonight too. Why not? Well, yeah, it's... why not be pretty, pretty princess all the time? Let's go there. <laughs> That'll really freak out my daughter-in-law. <laughs> oh no, no, we want them to be strong women. Yeah, but they'd like to be pretty with sparkly stuff. Yeah, but so. princesses can grow up to be queens. That is exactly right. Actually, a lot of my friends have grown up to be queens. So they didn't all start as little girls. Hmm. A couple of months. <laughs> Which is a whole other topic for another, another, another <laughs> podcast. I was going to say, a couple of my friends who grew up as well, they're men and they ended up as queens. But anyway. Um... Yep. <laughs> yep. That's the Thanksgiving show because they're all coming to Thanksgiving. <laughs> now, um, I, it's not so much a shout out, but um, there's actually an author event nearby in my suburb this week, oh, which I've booked to go. So I'll oh, give good. you feedback on that. It's the title is, it's at the local library, and it's called Have Fun Researching Your Novel. Woohoo, fun! Which just sounds like a cop-out, really. It's like, well, hey, everyone, it's okay to spend two months on Google. Um, <laughs> so have, I'm, fun, no, have fun not writing your novel. Correct. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Have fun putting off your dissertation. Go for the research. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, so I'm going to go there with an open mind, and if they ask, sure, you know, why sure you're you. here, I'll be like, well... <laughs> I'm a host of a writing podcast, and I'm just curious to see how you can get an hour out of trying to avoid writing a book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll expect great things when you come back, because you'll give us information on, on research, best way to avoid writing. Mm, it might end up either one or two ways. Either I'll come back really cranky, <laughs> highly likely, because I've got to do it after work <laughs> from seven, or we'll end up with another guest on the show. I'm not sure yet. Hey, so. yeah. Check them out if, they're, if, they, if they've got something interesting to say. You know, we love having them. Yeah. Thank you, Mark David, for coming on as you know, sure. something as ethereal as Twitter and, and trusting that we wouldn't totally destroy you. So we appreciate that. <laughs> anyway. I'm not limping off. I'm fine. Thank you. Good, good. <laughs> we went to the after show and take you out of that kick the crap out of you. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> so that's what those goons are doing outside the front door. I guess. Yep. <laughs> Jeez, they're early. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's all good. No, it's been a pleasure having you on. Uh, who have we got on next week, Catherine? Stacey Donovan, another author. And so we'll talk about her new book and how she got there. Fantastic. All right. Well, until next week, we'll see you then. See you then. Your book starts here on the Newbie Writers Podcast.